Good morning. Uh, we're going to be carrying on with our uh, study uh, on the God's pure word for the Dutch-speaking people. This will be part three. We'll be carrying on from part two. And we're talking about the Dutch Bibles, uh, in particular the Statenvertelling, because I've been finding all sorts of uh, Statenvertelling uh, people that believe, you know, the old words uh, in Dutch from 1637 is God's book and God's word. And uh, uh, I'm also finding what they're saying about the other Dutch versions and what they're saying about the other Dutch versions actually happens in the Statenvertelling. So they're actually condemning themselves. And I'll show you that as we go further into this study. Uh, we have here the King James Bible. It's the pure, perfect, preserved Word of God uh, for the English-speaking people. And we also have this in many other languages. A lot of people have been criticizing me lately uh, that uh, I say only God's Word is only in the King James Bible. Well. <clears throat> the King James Bible is perfect. It's the center of the universe. It is God's pure, perfect word. But we also have his words that were translated from the Texas Receptus and the Masoretic text from uh, the books of Moses in, uh, in the Old Testament in other languages. And I have them. I have copies of them here. German. We have Dutch. We have, we have uh, Spanish. We have uh, Hebrew, Greek. So... So God's word is in other languages. It's not in every language in the word in the world. That's true. It's not there. That's where the foolishness of preaching comes in. Okay, but we better be preaching the truth. And uh, we're, as we go through this study, we'll find out that uh, the majority of Dutch pastors, if not 99% of them, are not preaching the truth. They're spreading lies. They're spreading lies that they've been taught, and they're passing on. You pass on a lie, you're a liar. So we're going to find that out here. So this study is not only for Dutch-speaking people, but also for those of you that feel your Bible is the pure words of God. So if you feel your Bible is the pure words of God, whatever Bible it may be, and uh, we've got lots of different Bibles here, whatever Bible it may be, maybe the New King James, it may be uh, the NIV, it may be uh, the head book in Dutch, it may be, uh, and, and as we go through this teaching, you're going to find out the head book in Dutch, actually, in places it gives God much more glory than the Staten Vertelling. That's right. I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to prove that to you from the books themselves, from God's Word itself, and from the Statenberg telling itself, and from Pet Book itself. So, <clears throat> I'm by no means rebuking all Dutch pastors. I always say the Dutch pastors. That I'm not rebuking all Dutch pastors or Dutch-speaking people here. Because I know some of you also have the truth. Or, God would have never wrote uh, what he wrote in Revelation 5, uh, Revelation 5, 9. Revelation 5, 9. We're going to read this in Revelation 5, 9 here. Revelation 5, 9. Okay, Revelation 5, 9, we have... Uh, and they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So we know that there are people in heaven from every tongue and every nation which are of our brethren. So, let's go to our proof, uh, continue from part two, uh, but uh, we know up there we have Dutch people too, okay? And I'm sure there's more Dutch people that'll be going. A lot of them may very well have to go through the tribulation. Why? Because your pastors are teaching you that. And even if they say, say pre-trib, I'm gonna show you that they're teaching you the post-trib belief. You know what? They're trying to steal your crown. And I'll show you that in the study as we go further too. So let's go to uh, our proof text. For today will be John 8.47. So let's go to John 8.47 for a proof text. John 8.47. Uh, John 8.47 is uh, the proof text we use for this whole part 3. So, <clears throat> which by the way, which by the way, John 8.47 is correctly translated in the Staten Rebellion. Stat all the glory to God, you know. So, all the glory to God is in the Staten Rebellion. They got it right. So, the Staten Vertelling. So the translators were very careful there. They were very careful there. Why do you think they were very careful there? Because of what John 8, 47 says. You know, uh, like the Staten Vertelling, if you go to, to the different places where it talks about the translators and translating the Staten Vertelling, they all say, we want it to be like, just like the King James Version 1611. Just like. Now, where have we heard those words before? Huh. Okay, anyhow, John 8, 47. He that is of God heareth God's word. Words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You see? So when you tell me, oh, Rob, you think uh, only the King James has God's, God's, God's words, no other Bible. 
what if God did? I mean, he put it in, in he put it in in uh, Hebrew first. He wrote it in Hebrew with his own finger, by the way, on the first tablets, the tables of stone, and uh, he put it in Greek after that. He put it in uh, Latin after that. Uh, and then he wrote it in English and, and, several, and he put it also he put it also in Dutch. He also had his words in Dutch, and uh, he put them in English in 1611, because I'm sure God knew that everyone was going to be speaking English today. The pilots have to speak it. I mean, you guys can speak English, or you wouldn't be watching this study, right? Have you been studying the King James? Have you studied to show thyself approved? You know the word study is only in the King James, no other Bible? Have you studied to show yourself approved? But we're going to look at that too, because maybe it is in some Dutch Bibles. But not in the Staten for telling. They took it out. They don't want you to know about studying. They took it out. So, uh, uh, and now in part two, we left out uh, reading Daniel 3.25 and the Del... I don't, maybe I don't pronounce this right. Delfts. Delfts. Delftis Bible, 1477. I'll have to check how that's pronounced. And uh, and we're talking about uh, Daniel 3.25 would be about the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. We're talking about that. I'm going to need another camera here so I can show you what I'm looking at. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. In the Delft Bible, 1477, it says here, and I'll read it for you. Well, I try and, and video it with this camera here. Okay, so this is the Delfts 1477. And we're going to look at what is actually written in here in the old Dutch language. And uh, I'll try and read it for you. And okay, so this is the Delfts 1477. And we're going to look at what is actually written in here in the old Dutch language. And uh, I'll try and read it for you. And the third gedent is gelijk the God's son. And the fourth, uh, translating that way, and the fourth is likened to the Son of God. And the third gedent is gelijk the God's Son. And the fourth, uh, translating that way, and the fourth is likened to the Son of God. Wow. You hear that, guys? And you guys have all been telling me, all you Dutch pastors that I spoke to, I know personally, you've been telling me. Look at that. You've been telling me, you've been lying to me, you've been passing on lies, and I warned you, it's righteous judgment, I warned you, you've been passing on lies. I just showed you in the Dutch Bible from 1477 that it says, and the, uh, and the fourth is likened to the Son of God. Not a son of the God, or one of the sons of the gods like Thor, and the, nonsense. You're passing that on, you're saying, that's, that's because the unsaved king said that. That's a lie, that's a lie straight out of hell. The devil's lying to you, his footprints all over your Staten Vertelling Bible. That's great. The devil's footprints are all over this beast of a Bible. Sure, it's got some of God's words in it. But the devil's all over this. His footprints are all over that Bible. You see, I just proved it to you again. And we, we, we're going a lot further. We're not ending there. So let's go to the Vorsturman Babel from 1531. Now, this is the Delfts from 1477. Let's go a little bit further in time. 1477 to 1531. So we're looking at about almost 60 years there. At least 50. So let's go to the, the Vorsteller, uh, sorry, the uh, Vorsturman Babel 1531. Yeah, and we've got pages of that book here. We've got copies of copies of copies of it. So uh, so let's see what that says. And we're going to look at the same text, uh, which will be uh, Daniel 3.25. Daniel 3.25. Oh, I need my glasses for this. Anyhow, we need the other camera again, so I can show you guys this to you. Let me get this going. Okay, this is the Vorsterman Babel. Vorsterman Babel. 1531. And the... Uh, ...man's die is the son gods. And... And the presence of the fourth man, and the presence of the fourth man, which is the Son of God. It's a translation. The Vorster, the Vorster Man Bible from 1531 also confirms it's not the king that said that, it's God that said that. You guys are calling God a liar when you say the king said that and he wasn't saved. You're calling our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a liar. Or you're just lying yourself. Which is it? Either way, you're in trouble. You know you're in serious trouble. Because you all put on me that, that because I admit that I, I I tell lies sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I do. They slip out. I tell lies. Yeah, yeah and I admit that. But I hate lying. I abhor lying. 
I get it all the time from my workers. I hate it. Yeah. And I've caught myself passing on lies just like you guys were. I did it for 33 years passing on lies. I've lied to so many people. It's sickening. But I fell on my face before God in true sorrow and repentance and asked Him to forgive me. I don't want this life anymore, I said. Lord, show me the truth. And He is. He's showing me the truth. He's showing me the truth in every language. Languages I don't understand, He's showing me the truth. And how wicked most pastors are in these different languages in these different churches. And I'm bringing you guys the truth. And you know what? I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. And every time I say that to you guys, you say, have a nice day, and then, then block me on Facebook or unfriend me on Facebook. Why? Those aren't my words. Those are Jesus' words. You're rejecting Jesus Christ. I just passed his word on to you, and you rejected it. Wow. So we got a verse to man Bible 1531. So now I'm talking to the Dutch speaking pastors out there. You see, we got it right here. You want to see it? Come, I'll show you. We got it right here. Vorsterman Babel, 1531. Delfs the Babel, 1477. I got two witnesses. Hey, what did the scripture say about witnesses? I got two witnesses. Okay. So I'm talking to Dutch pastors, Dutch speaking pastors out there. So, have you as a Dutch pastor fully capable, fully capable of reading English, You're fully capable of reading English, Sorry uh, for my Bible here, but you know, this God pure per the center of the universe. I mean, it's old, but it's the center of the universe. And uh, so uh, you're fully capable of reading English. Have you, as a Dutch pastor, fully capable of reading English, rejected God's holy word in the King James Bible? You can read English. I see you on Facebook. You're making posts in English every day. You can't say you can't read English. You think the Holy Ghost isn't going to gonna show... If you ask him, I want to see all the truth that's in this King James, show me. Let it speak to me if it's God's Word. Why don't you ask this book, which is Jesus Christ on earth. Why don't you ask this book? You know, I'm going to read you. I'm going to believe every word of you. Now show me. Speak to me. It will. It will speak to you. I guarantee you it will speak to you. That's right. It will speak to you. And you want to hear your, it speaking to you out loud? Then read the words out loud. It will speak to you. Open it up. Any page. Just open it up. Ask God to let it speak to you. It's going to speak to you. Okay? You're, you can understand and speak and read English. Don't tell me you can't. You're obviously too lazy. You know what? What do you think I'm going to say? You're obviously too lazy, too lazy to read and study Dutch. Because I just showed you in two Dutch Bibles that what you're saying is a lie. That's right. I got two witnesses here. Two witnesses. That was 1477. And the uh, uh, Vorstorman Babel, 1531. Two witnesses against you. What are you going to do with these? Is the Spirit of God in these books? They're Dutch. They're before the Staten for telling. Are you, have you rejected these books? Have you even studied that they're even there or even exist? Boy, God gets angry. God gets real mad at you guys. Oh, just wait. Just wait till you meet him soon. You know what? You're still alive. You still have time to repent. You still have time to move to the truth. You still have time to seek and find all truth. So, but as to the King James Bible, you're obviously, you know, you guys are obviously too lazy to read and study Dutch, or you would have known this. And if you have studied it and you know it, why haven't you told your people? Why haven't you told your people that the Staten Vertelling is a corrupt book and a lie? Full of lies. Full of lies. Which makes you a liar. But as to the King James Bible, have you rebelled against this book? Many of you have told me, you rejected as truth. You rejected as truth. No, 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 no. God's word can't just be in the English language. You've rejected it as truth. If this is truly Jesus Christ on earth, which I believe it is, and the center of the universe, which I believe it is, you've rejected it as the truth. I've given you all the truth many, many times, and you've rejected it. You know what? What's the title for Jesus Christ? I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the I'm the... Jesus Christ is the truth. You even reject the truth and ignore the Holy Ghost in your own language. You see? Because I showed you in your own language. You ignore the Holy Ghost in your own language. I just produced two witnesses against your wives' fables. Yeah, wives' fables. You've been telling everyone wives' fables. All your people, you tell them wives' fables. Everyone that challenges you on Facebook and the internet, you give them wives' fables. And, and, and I've got the evidence. I've copied all, all, all your posts. I've got the evidence. So don't be lying about it. Because you're going to get caught in your lies. Your lies are going to find you out. You know? So i got two witnesses against your wife's fables. Two witnesses. Well, i got three, actually. i got the King James Bible on it. i got more. we got more. We haven't, we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg yet. And you know how much of that iceberg's underwater. 
that you guys have been hiding for years and years and years and centuries. Yeah, centuries. You know, the believers before you that believe this wicked book is God's word for the Dutch speaking people. Well, some of God's words are in there. It's not all wicked. Some of God's words are, and we told you at the beginning, we had a match, okay? There is matches in there. But what about the corruption? All it takes is one drop of poison. you got a cup of water, you just need one drop of poison in there to kill you. What about spiritual death? You're killing your people. Quit lying to them. So, your wife's fables. You know what? I barely speak, read, or understand Dutch. And God showed me. Why did he show me? Because I asked him. Have you asked him? Have you asked the Holy Ghost to lead you to all truth? Or have you rejected all truth? You rejected it. And I've got the evidence. I can prove you rejected it. Sure, you can kill me. But these videos will be all over YouTube, all over the Internet. People are going to find the truth. You best get down on your faces and repent. And if and if you're if you're a bishop, which means you're a pastor, or you have sheep, you know, and you're you're a leader teaching people, you're a teacher, you better step down off that pulpit. Because you're not qualified. A bishop must be blameless. And I show plenty of blame against you guys. I'm not speaking just one here, I'm speaking a lot to you guys that I met. So let's find out what happens to people that reject the word of God, which you guys have right to my face. And you've even got your children to reject it. And tell me that I'm saying it's nonsense. God's word can't only be in the English language, in the King James Bible. Because this is God's pure perfect word. And I'm going to show you from your own language that you're lying too. So let's go to 1 Samuel 15, 23. And find out what God has for you pastors. Find out what God has for you people that want to reject God's word. So 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You're adulterers. Yeah, you're an adultery. Huh. You're stubborn. You want to keep passing those wise fables. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being a king. That's right. Jesus Christ has rejected thee from being a king. Those are God's word, not mine. Yeah, you want you want to say God never changes and, and, and we have to look at all his words. You better be looking at these ones. Now, whoa, did you hear that? Who did Jesus say the kings and the priests will be? Let's go to Revelation. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Let's see. He's going to reject you from being a king, right? You're still alive. you still got time to repent. Come and talk to me about it. I'll help you out. I'll help you out all I can. I'm not Dutch. But I'll help you out in your own language. I mean, if I can do this study in Dutch, I can help you guys out. But no, you want to reject the words of God. You want to, you want to attack this book. Huh? Okay. Okay. You've been warned. Revelation 1. 5 to 6. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first forgotten of the dead, and the prince of kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins with his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What did it say in verse 6? and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So we, Bible, true Bible believers, that believe this is every word of God, pure, perfect, preserved. He's made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Okay, to God be the glory. All the glory goes to God, man. Jeremiah 6, 19. Let's keep going here and see what happens to you guys that have rejected God's pure, perfect word. He's talking about his word. Yeah. Okay, we're going to see that further on in the study. So Jeremiah 6.19 we'll go to next. And Jeremiah 6.19. Hear ye, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor my law, but rejected it. Are you still going to reject God's word? I wouldn't want to be in you shoe, your shoes at the judgment seat, at the beaming seat of Christ. Wouldn't want to be there. Okay, then. Jeremiah 8, 9. Let's stay in Jeremiah here. Jeremiah 8, 9. Jeremiah 8, 9. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in you guys? Maybe the serpent's wisdom. Huh? Teaching doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Yeah, we're going to go through those doctrines of devils you've been teaching in this study. You bet. You know, well, I shouldn't say bet because it's not a bet, it's a fact. You don't need to bet. You have been. So must we obey? Uh, oh, no, wait. I want to go to John 12. I want to go to John 12, 48. That's a very good one. Psalms. Let's go to John. Okay. 
Okay, John, John 12, 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. The word's going to judge you. That's right. This book's going to judge you because you spoke out against it. Your mouth spoke out against it. I saw your mouth speak up out against it personally. I watched as your mouth speak, speak out against it in, in your typing on Facebook, which I've saved copies of. You spoke out against this book. You think you're not going to get judged for that? Hmm. Okay. So, must we obey the gospel? Yeah, I see all you guys, you post these memes uh, uh, on Facebook. Obey the commandments, obey the commandments, obey the commandments. You always obey the, Which commandments? Then I ask you, oh, all ten commandments. No. New Testament believers will only have two. I went through that before, but we'll go through it again if we need to. So, uh, you, you, so must we, we obey the gospel or his commandments for this dispensation? Because you're all saying we got to believe. We all got to believe his commandments. I never saw one of you post a meme, obey the gospel. You all say obey his commandments. Why? What sets the scripture? What sets the scripture? Okay, we're going to go there. Okay, we're going to go to Matthew 22, Matthew 22, uh, 36. Matthew 22, 36. And uh, find out uh, what commandments we're supposed to obey. Because you're all saying obey the commandments. Let's see which commandments Jesus uh, uh, said we must obey. Uh, 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? We're in the book of Matthew. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 38. This is the first and great commandment. 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hmm. So the question is, why do you pastors keep vainly repeating to your people, obey his commandments, obey his commandments? Which commandments? Whose commandments? Satan's? Which commandments? Do you pick and choose? You pick and choose them? I already told you the two he gave us as New Testament Bible believers in this dispensation. Yeah, we have dispensations. Don't say we don't have dispensations. All the, all the, all the scripture dispensations. In fact, the word dispensation is probably in here at least four times. At least four times. We have at least four dispensations. So, now, let's look at what God told us as New Testament believers to obey. What did he tell us to obey? Okay, let's go to Romans 10, 16. Romans 10, 16. Now you can stop the video and go there. And you you, you want to check every word coming out of my mouth. Check every word coming out of your pastor's mouth. Okay, above it and below it. Yeah, you need to judge your pastor. You need to righteously judge your pastors. You need to righteously judge me. Make sure what I'm telling you is the truth. Because I tell you, I could lie. I could easily miss a word or something. That would be a lie. It would make God's word a lie if I missed, missed, missed a word. Yes, it would. So, Romans 10, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Elias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So they have not all obeyed the gospel? You guys are so busy obeying commandments that you're making up and putting, putting people in your congregation, your people, under the law? Huh. Who have not believed our report. And let's go to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Let's go to see what, see what else God says. Okay, uh, this is uh, the book of Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 1 8. Second Thessalonians 1 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and, th and they that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're to obey the gospel, guys. Quit this uh, uh, trying to put people under the law stuff. You're going, you're going to Hebrew roots movement when you start doing that nonsense. Now let's move on to 1 Peter 4.17. 1 Peter 4.17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So we obey the commandments of the gospel. You're not obeying the gospel of God. You probably don't even know what the gospel is, most of you out there. And we're going to teach you today what the gospel is from God's word. We're going to let him teach you. We're going to let the Holy Ghost convict you. So friends, before we get into the meat of the corrupted Dutch Bible translations, it's critical to understand that the time of Jacob's trouble, which a lot of you say is the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation, you're, you're post-trib believers, most of you I know, and you believe you're going to go through this this time of Jacob's trouble. Well, I got news for you: uh, you might not be going. 
But if you keep asking for it, you keep asking for it, you're going to go through it. You see? So you better admit the truth. You better start facing the truth. Which true Bible believers will be spared from. Now you will have to have works in that time of Jacob's trouble. You're going to have to have works as well as faith to enter heaven then. We don't need to do it by works. They say, oh yeah, we have to do works to enter heaven. Or we'll go to hell. No, 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 no. Then, in the time of Jacob's trouble, which was Peter was talking about, you're going to have to have works. As well as faith to enter heaven then. And uh, I tell you, those works are going to get pretty gruesome. But anyhow, we'll go through that. That's another teaching. It's not for us true Bible-believing Gentiles at the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jewish, Jacob's, Jewish, Israel. It's for Israel's people. And I believe that anyone that has swallowed the wicked replacement theology teachers uh, saying, oh yeah, now we're spiritual Jews. We're the Jews now, you know. God's finished with the Jews. No, God's not finished with the Jews. You know, teachers, I, I know Tex Mars, Stephen Anderson, they're synagogues of Satan. They're all synagogues of Satan that say God is done with the Jews and that we're the Jews now. You know, the early part of the book of Acts was written for Jewish Jewish people. Let's go to Acts 2. Let's go, let's, let's go to Acts 2. You've got to be real careful with Acts 2. That was written to Jewish people, you know. Acts 2, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You see? So, so who are they speaking to? Devout men, dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, out of every nation. Devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, Acts 2 was preached to the Jewish, God's chosen people. Go further down to the witness, which is Acts 2.22. I've got a witness in that, in, that, in that same book, Acts 2. There's a witness in there. Acts 2.22 says... Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Ye men of Israel. So who's he speaking to? The men of Israel. He's not speaking to the Gentiles. Quit lying to your people. Quit passing on lies and wise fables. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God for reproof, correction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Doctrine, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we use it for instruction and correction, but not as our, as our statement of faith, not to, not, to, not to say, oh yes, you know, take one scripture and say, oh yeah, you must be baptized to be saved or you're going to go to hell. You know what, anyone that's saying that, that's a doctrine of devils. I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to prove that to you. Okay, when you mention, and most of you Dutch pastors are saying that, I know. Now, when you, when you, when you mention, well, not most, but a lot of you are, a lot of you are. When you mention, uh, when I mention this to pastors that claim baptism is essential to salvation, essential and regenerative according to, to this Catholic teaching is a Catholic. You know that baptism immersed in water is a Catholic teaching. Sure, John did it. Sure, John even baptized Jesus. But what did John say before Jesus came? Hmm. Okay. What what these guys are doing there is they it's essential, regenerative, regenerative according, but it's a Catholic teaching. They jump you to another Bible verse right away. See, when you mention Acts two, oh yeah, but Acts two was. It was preached to the Jews, and then you give them a witness that Acts 2 was preached to the Jews. Instead of answering the question, you say it's, it's preached to the Jews, not for us. Instead of answering that, they jump you to another verse reader. Oh, yeah, but what about Acts 8? Oh, yeah, but what about Acts so and so? Oh, yeah, but what about Galatians? Oh, yeah, what about, you know, they jump you on. Watch out for these verse jumpers. They're very dangerous men, very, they're, they're deceivers, you know. So when you mention this to a pastor that claimed baptism is essential to salvation, they jump you to this other verse right away. Now I'm going to show you a tape of what a Catholic actually believes. The, the priest will actually say that the man that baptizes you regenerated, regenerated you. You know? Okay, I'm going to show you a little video clip here. And then I want you to look at this video clip. Then we're going to talk about it some more. When we call a priest father, what we mean, and the reason he's given a title, is because in a spiritual sense, at baptism, when the priest conducts a baptism, he regenerates us. The notion of fatherhood deals with generation, okay, the giving of life. And the priest, by administering baptism, effects a regeneration. We believe that baptism, in fact, confers grace. It actually does something. It's a sacrament. And that's why priests have been traditionally called father. One of the reasons for calling the priest father was because he regenerates us in baptism. In Catholic baptism, the priest is the medium through which the uh, Catholic is regenerated by water baptism. According to what Mr. Keating said, the priest is the agent of regeneration in this matter with the water when the Catholic is baptized. I need not remind you that Fidel Castro was baptized by a Roman Catholic priest, as was Adolf Hitler, as was Benito Mussolini, as was Batiste, 
and Sandista, Sandistina, whatever his name is, and also Heinrich Himmler, the head of the Nazi Gestapo, and Rudolf Hess, the commandant of the Auschwitz concentration camp, and Kurt von Stangl, the commandant of the Treblinka concentration camp, and Koch, con con uh, concentration commandment of the, uh, the Buchenwald concentration camp. They were all baptized by priests in the Catholic Church. If that's regeneration, may God save us from it. You see, so this is why baptism is so important to those that say it has salvific value. They want to be your spiritual father. They want you to obey them. Obey my commandments. Obey. You know, not, not talking about God's commandments. They're talking about their men. They want you to believe their men, man-made commandments and stay in their little churches and control your money and get your tithes and get your offer. They don't have to ask you. They just have to make you feel guilty, and they do. Some of these pastors have told me angels have come to them. Oh, yeah, men. And I think it was an angel came to me and told me that you have to tithe. And others just, they, 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 they go and they, they go into, uh, they go to the last book in the New Testament. They go to the last book in the New Testament, then they're going to tell you, yeah, other pastors go to the last book in the Old Testament, make you feel guilty, tell you you're robbing God. Well, I'm going to show you a little video clip of that, too. So the bad is losing all your rewards and being ashamed, ashamed for all the years during that thousand-year period when we reign on earth because you have no rewards, no crowns, and you could have had them. The sufferer's crown, the runner's crown, the soul winner's crown. You don't have any of them. Do you tithe? No. Then you've robbed from God. You're going to lose rewards. You've robbed me. How in tithes and offerings? You're cursed with a curse. But you lose for the bad. And when you disobey God and you don't tithe 10% and give extra, he says, you have stolen from me. Oh, you know, I need funds. Please, I'm not trying to preach this right now. I've got to get this message to the whole world. It's going to cost me millions. Uh, uh, pastors that say you're robbing God make you feel guilty and give them tithes and offerings. Wicked men. Wicked men, I tell you. So now we're going to go. Now they say they're your spiritual father and obey them. We're going to go to this video, Men Baptized in Water as Salvific Salvation. Okay, I'm going to show you another little video here. Baptism is essential for salvation. The Bible says that we must be born again through water and the Holy Spirit. The Catholic Church understands that to be baptism. And that there are really three forms of baptism. One is water baptism. The other is the martyr's death, baptism of blood. And the third is the baptism of desire, where a person in what the church calls invincible ignorance who honestly tries to do good and lives the life according to the best lights he has, can be saved. I'm about to quote the church's teachings from the most important council they ever had, published 1978, to make sure it don't get out of date. And this thing here says that if you don't believe the following things, you're cursed. Right. Now, a man who is cursed isn't going into heaven. Like Mr. Keating just said, no unclean thing will enter in. But what I'm quoting from you is not uh, what Keating just said. What I'm quoting you is from the official, the largest official, most important council the Catholic Church ever held. Moreover, it is scarcely necessary to state that the translation of these dogmatic decisions will be of immense advantage to the reader. The Council of Trent takes the first place, not only because of its restatement of Catholic doctrine, but because of its extraordinary influence both within and without the Church. Its purpose was twofold, to define the doctrine of the Church in reply to the heresies of the Protestants. In them, the Council proclaimed to the world the doctrines that were committed to the keeping of the Church on the day of Pentecost. What I'm reading to you is what the Church got from Pentecost to the present time. If any man say in the Roman Catholic Church, which is the mother and mistress of all churches, there is not the true doctrine concerning the sacrament of baptism, let him be anathema. No Baptist believes that Roman Catholic water baptism saves anybody. There's no Baptist in this church that believes that. So according to the Catholics, he's anathema. Not according to Mr. Keating, but according to the Council of Trent. If anyone say that baptism is optional, that it is not necessary for salvation, let him be anathema. And the reality is that baptism is absolutely essential. So what is our gospel? Our gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That's our gospel, guys. 1 Corinthians 1-4. And there's no water there. 
It's our gospel. How do we know it's our gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. You're to stand on this gospel. Okay? Now, Jesus taught Paul this, and Paul's teaching us this. By which, verse 2, by which also ye are saved. You're saved by this gospel. This is the gospel we're saved by today. Okay? By which ye, which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again in the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel for us today, guys. That's our gospel. That's our gospel. So people that are teaching you, if you're not baptized, you're going to go to hell. They're lying to you. They're already lying to you. You know? So there's no water there. You see any water there? Of course not. It's not there at all. Not in 1 Corinthians in there 15. John the Baptist was very clear that Jesus would no longer have us to be baptized in water for salvation. But spiritually, he's very, very clear on that. Matthew 3, Matthew 3, 11 to 12. Let's see, let's see what John said. Now, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So he baptized with water unto repentance. Who? The Jewish people. The Jewish people, that's right. Yeah, I indeed baptize you with water. And he's speaking to the Jewish people. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, he's talking about Jesus Christ. He that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost, comma, and with fire. But note there, see that comma? Note there, just how wrong the Church of Christ is with water. And, because Jesus is coming to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. And, the charismatics are with fire. Because let's go to verse 12 and see what that comma means, I'm with fire. 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He's going to burn up all you chaff charismatics. They keep calling your fire down. You're, you're going to get your fire. Keep on singing for it. Keep on asking for it. Now Jesus said to ask for us to receive, right? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Right? Did he, is that, that the words he used? Let's, let's, let's go. Let's see what God says here. In Matthew 7, 8. Let's go to Matthew 7, 8. Matthew 7, 8. Matthew 7, 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth. What did that, what did that scripture just say? For everyone. Everyone. That's you and me too. Everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. Are you seeking the truth? Have you sought the truth in the Dutch language? Have you looked in the older versions of the Dutch Bible to see if the truth is there and see if you've been lying to your people? So Matthew 7, 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Have you knocked on the door? Have you been knocking on these doors? Jesus said, I am the door. He said, I am the word. I am the truth. Have you been knocking on Jesus' door? Searching for the truth. Have you been studying to show thyself approved? A workman? Mm -hmm. So let's go to Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever, whatsoever, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing. Do you believe this book? Do you believe it's the perfect word of God? Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Are you calling God a liar? Have you not received what you asked for? Are you calling God a liar? Huh? You know, this text Mars stuff, this salvific baptism he teaches, and going through the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, this whole crowd, they're asking for the time of Jacob's trouble by believing it's for them. That's where your faith is. Your faith is in looking for the Antichrist. Your faith is looking for the time of Jacob's trouble. Because you really believe you're going to go through it. You're, you've not only lost the crown, while you're still alive, you can gain it back. You're also taking crowns away. Oh, no, there's another way you can get that crown back. Uh, not just through persecution, if you get killed for Christ, then you can also receive that crown. But we'll go to the scriptures on that later on. That's another teaching. Pretty much. So, uh, you're asking for the time of Jacob's trouble by believing it's for you, right? That's where your faith is. 
and you're working to prepare to the end. That's your works. You're doing the works already, working to repair. What are you doing works for? Salvation, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Huh? Believe. Yeah, and repent. True repentance. So let's go on now. We're, this is a Dutch study, right? Let's go on to a third Dutch Bible. Oh, glory to God. You know, let's go on to a third Dutch Bible which confirms the Son of God and Lucifer. As well as other doctrines, we are instructed to follow salvifically. Salvifically, that's right. Yeah, let's go to another third Dutch Bible. I'm going to bring a third witness in. What did God say about witnesses? Whoa, whoa unto you pastors that scatter the sheep. Okay, so it's time to bring in the third witness, guys. We have, we have here, we have here a Louvenz Babel. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Louvenz Babel. I think it's a district in Holland or something or in the Netherlands. Louvenz Babel, 1548. That's right. Louvenz Babel, 1548. And we're going to go to Daniel 325. Louvenz Babel. Uh, you know what? Before we go to Daniel, let's go to Isaiah. Uh, uh, well, no. Uh, we're not going to go to Isaiah yet because Lucifer is there. We already know that's there. We already said said, said Daniel 3.25. We're going to go there. So, uh, Luvenza Babel, 15.48, Daniel 3.25. I'll need the other camera so I can show you guys what I'm looking at again here. And he heeft gehandwoord and gesed See, ik zie vier mannen, mannen aangebonden in de wandelende in de midden de vuurs. En daar is geen verdiefenis in geen leden. Okay, I got this right. En de handen te wenden vierden is gelikt the son gods. And what does that say? The form of the fourth is like the son of God. The form of the fourth is like the son of God. We've got a third witness against you liars. You pastors have been lying your faces off to your people, to your congregation, and everyone that speaks to you and brings righteous judgment and challenge you on this matter. And you're saying, oh no, the king wrote that uh, the fourth is like a son of the gods, like Thor or something like that. That's absolute nonsense. Wives' fables. Wow. A fourth witness against you. I, a third witness against you. Sorry, I've got a lot more witnesses. Got a lot more. You haven't even studied your in your own language. You haven't studied. Shame on you. Woe to the pastors that scatter the sheep. H have you unfriended me on Facebook? Many of you have. Most of you have. If not all of you, unfriended me on Facebook. Was I one of your sheep? Was I going to your church faithfully? Supporting your church? Did you scatter me? You know what the scripture says? When one sheep is lost, what are you supposed to do? Not a single one of you have done it. Not a single one. Shame on you. You're not a follower of Jesus Christ. you got your own Jesus. Another Jesus. Another spirit. Another gospel. And I'm going to prove every word of what I just said here. So, uh, in the form of the force of like the Son of the God. That's Levin's of Babel, uh, 1548. Now we're going to go further. Uh, here we go. The Levin's of Babel, 1548. We're going to go further. And we're going to go to the prophet Isaiah. And that'll be in the 14th chapter, verse 12. Okay, I'll need my camera again. Levin's of Babel, uh, 1548. The prophet Isaiah... This is Isaiah 14, 12, and I'll see if I can get uh, the other camera going here so I can show you what it actually says, so you know I'm just not making this stuff up. This is Luvenza Babel, 1548. Uh, and it says, and it says, Who said fallen hemo, who said, 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 vanden hemo ha fallen Lucifer? This morgens fruit up heat. Who said it? Neither Hulen to Arden. Hey, did the Hayden the Wunta. So, what does that translate to? 
That translates to, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Look at, look at that. For Lucifer, you guys have all been lying to me about Lucifer too. Well, Lucifer is actually, if you, if you, if you go to the Greek, it actually means a, a, a light, shining light, a, a lamp. You keep talking nonsense and wise fables to your people and to me. And to anyone that confronts you with this. And so do all the new Bible versionists in English. They all do the exact same thing. You guys are. You're guilty. Your book is guilty. This book is not God's word. This statin for telling is not God's word. You're lying to your people. You're lying to the whole world. And you think you're going to stand before a mighty God, Jesus Christ Almighty, and get away with that filthy lie and wise fables you've been passing on? You better repent. So look, at we've got a third witness. We've got a third witness, guys. That the majority of you Dutch pastors, please contact me. If it if it's not all Dutch pastors, which I haven't met one that, that doesn't say this nonsense and pass on these wise fables yet. I haven't met one. I'm sure there must be one out there. It's got to be in heaven unless you're all corrupt and just doing it for the money, for an easy income. So please contact me if it's not all Dutch pastors. All the ones I've talked to so far, you can still contact me. But you've proven yourself liar and you better repent of it and you better tell your people you've been lying to them. Better tell the whole world and on Facebook you've been lying to everybody because that's what you've been doing. So have you been leading the sheep, your people, astray with outright lies? Adding to God's word? Hey, you've been adding to it. You haven't even studied it in your own language? And protecting your Catholic text. That's right. You're protecting your Catholic text. That's exactly what you're doing. And when I tell you you're protecting a Catholic text, no, 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 no. It's God's word. It's not Catholic. It's Catholic. It's from the Vaticanus. Those words are from the Vaticanus and the Cona Sinaiticus. God never said them. Man said them. Satan's footprint is all over there. Satan said it. He always changes God's word. Three Dutch Bibles now, including the first Dutch book ever bound, the Dells 1477, the Dells Babel, 1477, have found thee to be liars. The lies always find joke, guys. So what does God have to say to you about that? You can shut this study off if you want, or you can carry on, you can repent, and you can start studying to show thyself approved. And you know what? All those tithes, all those offerings, all that money you've taken, I don't care if it's even 10 cents or one cent, all that money you've taken from people, you've stolen it from them because you're feeding them wise fables. The pastors that feed my sheep and scatter them. Well, let, we'll go to that scripture later on. Uh, I, I, I'm just quoting off the top of my head. But you've been feeding the people lies. Guess what? You've been stealing from them. you got to pay all that money back to every single one of them. And not just one time. Twofold in the scripture, it says. You say, well, maybe some of you have been taking money for 40 years or more. It's going to be pretty hard to pay that back, isn't it? But you got to do it according to God or you're a thief. And you get cast in the lake of fire. you got to do it. And you don't think for one second, if you actually believe, if you actually believe this is a pure, perfect word of God preserved, that he won't give you the provision to do that? He will. He will. Ask him and he will. We already went through the ask him studies. Ask and you shall receive. All that ask. Okay, so if you're a true Bible believer, you're part of the all, he's going to give you that money to pay everybody back. And you got to pay it back. That's right. Or you can't go to heaven. So quit telling people they're going to go to hell if they don't get baptized. And quit telling people all this other nonsense in the post-tribulation rapture stealing their crowns. Quit telling it to them. So, uh, let's go to Proverbs 36. Proverbs 36 and see what God has in store for you, gentlemen. I'm not going to say ladies because there can't be any lady pastors out there. Sorry. You're saying you're a lady pastor. You're, you're, you're a liar too. <laughs> you're a liar because there is no woman bishop. But you know, there can be woman prophetesses. There can be woman teachers. Absolutely, there can be woman teachers. There's there's a lot of good woman teachers out there that can teach the Word of God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. So Proverbs 36. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Did you be found a liar today? Yes, you did. Yes, all you pastors out there that know me, you know I'm, you know, I'm talking. You know God's speaking to you today. You've been found a liar. Your sins have found you out. You're full of sin. You're full of sin, trying to teach sinless perfection and nonsense. Or oh, you can't sin if you're a Christian. You can't tell a lie if you're a Christian. You can't drink alcohol if you're a Christian. A Christian cannot drink alcohol. It's impossible. Well, God's Word has something else to say about that, too. 
I'm not saying a Christian should drink. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. As a king and priest, you're not to drink. That's right. You're not to drink. But uh, if you said that a Christian cannot drink out, you've lied. You've lied to the people. That's right. And I've got handfuls of lies. And I'm going to prove them all in the study. Every single one of them. Because you keep on telling them. You keep on lying. You're full of self-righteousness. That's right. You're full of pride. And your father, Lucifer, your father, Satan, he's, he's the pride master. And you're still alive. You can come out of this nonsense you've been teaching. You can come to the truth. Right? You're still alive. You're still breathing. You, you may have your last breath tonight. So you better do it quick. You better repent. Ezekiel 13.8. Let's go to Ezekiel 13.8. We've got to go to Ezekiel 13.8 here. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. Because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Hmm, therefore. So, have I seen you lying? Yeah, I've seen you lying. And if I don't say anything, if I don't rebuke you, if I don't reprove you, you've been saying lies. Then I'm going to be guilty of your lies. So, I've got to do this study. I've got to carry on with this study. So don't anyone ask me to stop. If you want to meet the real Jesus and have the real truth, come and help me with this study if you're Dutch. You don't even have to be a pastor. You can just be a person. Come and help me with this study. You want the real Jesus Christ. You want to know the real Jesus. You want to go to heaven. Yeah. So, you see seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord. So Ezekiel 13, 8, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold I am against you, saith, saith the Lord God. Now let's go over to Ezekiel 13, 19. Now 13, 19. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die. You're slaying souls that should not die. You're deceiving people. You're turning people against God. And to slay the souls that should not die. And to save the souls alive that should not live. By your lying to my people. That hear your lies. So what does that mean actually? And save the souls alive that should not live. So how about you lying to save souls alive that should not live? Because souls that shouldn't have lived, people that aren't saved, hear your lies. Yeah, they hear you lying. And they know you're lying. They know you're lying. The people of the world, the people that are unsaved, are a lot wiser than us. I can show you that in the scriptures. They're a lot smarter than we are. A lot smarter. So, by lying to people that hear your lies. Now, let's look. Let, let's be fair. Let's be fair, guys, because we've been doing this study in Dutch. There's a couple of other older translations of the English Bibles before the King James. Because you all say, oh yeah, you believe only the Word of God is in the King James Bible, blah, 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 and all the other things you tell me. So let's go to, why don't we go to the Geneva Bible. Let's go to the Geneva Bible, Isaiah 14, 12. Let, let's, just, let's just look at this, the Geneva Bible. And we're going to go to Isaiah 14, 12. Yeah, this is the Geneva Bible. Yeah, I've got the God's words in the Geneva Bible. 1599. Yeah. And uh, let's go to Isaiah. And then we'll get the other camera here so I can show you here. First of all, we'll show you it's the Geneva Bible. And this is the Geneva Bible. Okay, okay this is the uh, 1599 Geneva Bible. Calvin Legacy is probably done by Calvinists. We'll see. We're going to talk about Calvinists in a little bit. And we're going to go to Isaiah 14. 14.12, and see what that says here. In the Geneva Bible in the English language. is How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, and cut down to the ground, which didst cast lots upon the nations. So it's, so it's still Lucifer. It's still Lucifer. Now all the new Bible versions in English, other than the King James, also corrupted God's word. The new ones, that's right. But... Let's go to let's go to since we're in the Geneva Bible, let's carry on to Daniel. Let's carry on to Daniel 325. I just want to go to Daniel here, to 325. And we're going to see what that says. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like 
the Son of God. So we got a witness from 1599 that proves the King James Bible is a pure, perfect, pure, perfect Word of God. We got a witness from 1599 for Isaiah and Daniel, and that's one of the only places. Boy, so we've got God's Word also in the Geneva. It's not pure, pure perfect, preserved Word yet. It was in transition, but uh, Lucifer's there. What the King actually said is there, not the with the wise fables you guys have been passing on. Not the wise fables you guys have been passing on. And uh, I want to show you something else in English, just to know that, you know, that, that we've got all kinds of other witnesses against you, and the English language as well. This is the Tyndale Bible from 14, 15, uh, 1549. And uh, it was, uh, he had only done uh, the New Testament, I believe, and uh, the Old Testament was then helped out by uh, Matthews. But anyhow, we've got Matthews and Tyndale. So let's go to Matthews and Tyndale from 1549. And first of all, we're going to go to... Uh, and for the, the Tyndale Bible, we're going to go to... The Prophet Isaiah. I'm going to go to the Prophet Isaiah. I'm going to go to the Prophet... Just to show you... That because you guys are all saying, oh no, it's not Lucifer, it's Morning Star. So let's go to the Tyndale Bible, and I'll show you on this camera here, the Tyndale Bible. Isaiah 14, 12. And see what it says. See if it's Lucifer or Morning Star. Is, uh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Okay, this is the Tyndale Bible. Uh, also with Thomas Matthews. From, uh, 1549, 1549, and we're going to go to Isaiah 14:12 and see what it says. See if it's Lucifer or Morning Star. Is uh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? The fair morning child. So this was in transition. Uh, this is in transition, but we still got Lucifer. Uh, this is in transition, but we still got Lucifer in here, you see? We still got Lucifer in the Tyndale Bible as well. Well, guys, so we got the Tyndale Bible, another witness against you. Another witness against your lies. Man, you guys are telling a lot of lies. That's pathetic. I told you that I told one lie because because when I was in the Word of Faith movement for 33 years, I was passing on lies. I, I admitted it. It's like you're passing on lies today. I mean, I mean, my blood's not innocent from back then, but it's been washed since. I repented of it. So all these, now all these new uh, versions in English, other than the King James, also corrupted God's words. All the new versions. I'm going to show. Uh, uh, in, that'll be another study, though. This is just too much for this study. There's just too many. There's got to be close to 200 new English Bible versions, and they're all corrupt. They're all corrupt. They're all filth. So if you guys are involved in any of them, drill holes in them and burn them. Burn those Bibles, just like the Staten Vertelling. It's full of corruption, man. Now, it's not just the Dutch. But all new Bible versions move you into believing wise fables and superstition. And what did God say about wise fables and superstition? What did God say about that? Let's go to 1 Timothy 4.7. 1 Timothy 4.7. But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. We're to exercise ourselves unto godliness and refuse profane and old wise fables. But you guys keep passing them on. Well, you better not let me hear you pass them on again. I'm going to challenge you. Right in front of your congregation, I'm going to challenge you on this. I'm not going to put up with that anymore. Because you're lying to your people. And I will go to all your people. And if you don't have deacons and you don't have uh, uh, elders in your church, I'll go to the people. I'll go to the people and tell them the truth. i got all their addresses. i got all their emails. I'm going to tell them the truth. I'm going to warn them that you're lying to them. So you better repent of it and start telling them the truth. You want me to work with you? I'll work with you. I'll help you. But you got to quit your lying. And you got to admit you're lying, number one. You're a filthy liar. All you guys I met so far. But we're studying Dutch today, okay? So let's go back to the Dutch tongue. Let's go to Acts 25, 19. Yes, let's go to Acts 25, 19. And let's just see. We just read, uh, uh, we're going to talk about, super, we're talking about superstition, right? We're talking about old wise fables uh, 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 and superstition. So let's just go to Acts 25:19 and see what that says. We're going to go to the Staten Vertelling, but Acts 25:19 actually says in the in the King James English, and uh, 
also in uh, a lot of the other older English Bibles and the older Dutch Bibles. We're going to go there too. Yep. Yeah, going to catch in some more lies here, guys. Now, uh, with your lion book, the Staten Retelling, this filthy lion book, got some of God's words. Got some of his pure, perfect words too. Some of them. But it's not the word of God. This book has another spirit. I'm going to prove that to you from your own pastors that believe this that and we're telling from their own words. That's right. So Acts 25, 19. But had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and one of and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Now, what does you think the Staten verse telling say in Acts 25, 19? Let's go to the Staten verse telling. And let's go to Acts 25, 19. Yeah, let's go there. Acts 25, 19, Staten verse telling. 19, 25. Maar heden tegen hem ech ene vragen, van hun goddienst en van Zeker Jesus, zeker in Jesus, die estorven was welken palus seed te leven. Now, what would you think of the translation in English would that be? You, you Dutch people already know. You already know. Because God's word for that was their own superstition. What did your Dutch translation say? but had him some questions of their religion, not superstition, some questions of the religion, and of Jesus who died, whom Paul said to live. Interesting. Why did they change, the, why did they take away and add to the Word of God there? Why did this wicked book take away and add to the Word of God? Hmm? Why did it do that? Well, let's go on, and we're going to see. Let's go to Revelation 12. We're going to go to Revelation 12, and we're going to see what's going on here. We're going to take some more verses, and we're going to give you some more proofs. Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. God's pure, perfect, preserved word. Let's go to Staten Retelling. Revelation 12. Revelation 11, 12. Uh... En er werd een rote teken. Hey, rote teken? Isn't that a sign? Whoa, guys, it's supposed to be a wonder. Let's find out what's going on. En er wordt een rote teken gezien in de gemel. Namelijk een vrouw bekleed. And it goes on, the scripture goes on. But it changed, it took away the word wonder and reinserted the word sign. Why did it do that? The same reason all new Bible versions do. It's Vaticanus. It's corrupt Catholic text. It's a corrupt Staten Vertelling Catholic text. And what does that actually say in English? And a great sign was seen in heaven. No, that's not what God said. That's not what God said. God said a great wonder. There's a big difference between a wonder and a sign. Things that are different are not the same, gentlemen. And ladies that are listening out there to this teaching that would like to learn, learn, the, learn the Word of God, Happy to teach too. And a great sign was seen in heaven. Because my teacher is the same teacher you'll have if you ask him. He'll show you too. The Holy Ghost. Just ask him to show you all truth. Say, you know what? I want to put everything aside I've learned. And you open God's book. Not this one. This one's corrupt. It's that in Vitelli. Open God's book. I'll show you I'll show you where the words are of God are in, in, in Dutch. Further in the study. Open God's book. A King James Bible. You can understand English or you wouldn't be understanding me. Okay? Open God's prayer words. Say, I believe Every word in this book is from you, God. Every word is pure and perfect. Every word is preserved. Show me the truth. Speak to me, and he'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. I guarantee it. He'll speak to you if you ask him. You mean it with your heart. You mean it with your heart. Okay. Let's go on to uh, two verses further down in the King James, okay? In the book of Revelation. <coughs> Only two verses further down. Go to the King James. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Now we go to the Staten Retelling. We corrupted God's word again. You know what? At first I thought there was 40 mistakes in there. 
Then I started really studying this Bible, even though I don't speak or read much Dutch. And I found close to 400. Guess how many I found now? <laughs> we'll go there in this study. Uh, but you know what? This study is going to take years to do. There's that much corruption and that many mistakes in this book. How many mistakes does it take in a book before it's corrupt, before it's not God's word anymore? How many mistakes you got to find? Thousands? What if I tell you there's thousands in here? Thousands. That what you believe is not God's word? Got to burn this book, guys. Some of God's pure words are in here. I don't know how to deal with that. Some of them got translated properly. All the glory to God. But this book is corrupt. This book has another spirit. This book has another Jesus. Be very careful with this book. So, let's go to Staten Vertelling. In er word en undertaken. Undertaken! Another sign? No, 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 no. Another wonder. Things that are different are not the same. I see. I won't read the rest of you. You can read it in Dutch if you're Dutch, and the people that don't understand Dutch won't. But I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll put the scripture at the bottom of the screen here. You can look at it. So uh, let me just translate that to you in English for those that didn't understand what I just said. Uh, uh, well, uh, Dutch again. Een e en er word een undertaken has seen, and another sign was seen in heaven. Another sign? It's not another sign. It's another wonder. Your book is corrupt. So why did this Staten Vertelling translate wonder into sign? This book is wicked. Into sign. So that you won't recognize the wonders. You know, it's almost September 23rd. Maybe September 23rd by the time I'm able to post this video. But you won't be able to, to recognize the wonders. You're going to think they're signs. Now, did the Dutch translators know what a wonder was? And did they know the difference? And when they're intentionally corrupting this, adding Dan Canis Catholic text in here? You want to defend this Bible? What I'm going to show you, if you still want to defend it after what I show you, then something's really wrong with you. You can't be saved. You can't even be saved. You just think you're saving yourself with your own self-righteousness. You can't be saved if you think you're saved after what I'm going to show you in this wicked book. Oh yes, they knew exactly what they were doing, the translators. And we're going to talk about the translators knew they were too. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were hiding the truth from you. Why? So you look through a mirror and see nothing but your self-righteousness. They taught you to do this and you swallowed, you swallowed a hook, line and sinker. Just like the New English translation. Instead of looking through a glass darkly and seeing the future from God's word in the last days. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 12. What a, uh, and that's, no, you know what? We've already done that. You can go there and check yourself. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 is through a glass darkly. And the Staten for telling, change it to a mirror. You can't see through a mirror. You can't see through a mirror. Unless you're on the backside, it's a two-way mirror. You can't see through a mirror. You're going to only see yourself and your self-righteousness. You're saving yourself. You're not saved. How are you going to get to heaven if you're not saved? So let's just slip to Romans 15, 9. And we're going to talk a little bit more about signs and signs and wonders here. So Romans 15, 19, we're going to go to. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, through mighty signs and wonders. Let's find out if the Staten Vertelling translators knew what a wonder was. Okay? Let's go here. Romans 15, 19. And let's just show you how wicked this book is. This contradicts itself all over the place. It's not the Word of God. It's another spirit. Another gospel. It's another Jesus. It's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has not inspired this book. This book is not an inspired Word of God. Sorry, guys. Let's read it in Dutch now. Romans 15, 19. Doorgracht. Van teken een wonderheden en door de kracht van de geest gods. Zodat so ik van Jerusalem af en rondom tot Lilicrium to het evangelie van Christus vervolgd heb. The direct translation is that by the power of signs and wonders. So the Dutch translators knew what a wonder was. They knew the difference between signs and wonders. Why did they corrupt all those texts? So you couldn't see the future. They didn't want you to know the future. 
and you're looking through a mirror anyhow, so you never see the future only in your self-righteousness. And by the power of the Spirit of God, so by the power of signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God, so that I have fulfilled the gospel of Christ from Jerusalem, and round about into Lycurium. Lyricum. Now, let's look on at the rules given to the translators to make the stands Staten for telling. Yeah, they had rules. They had to follow rules. Okay, the Staten for telling. Let's talk about the rules. We have to, we have to go into that because you're going to see something amazing here. The Staten for telling Dutch, and you can find this on Wikipedia yourself. The Staten for telling Dutch, which is the state's translation, is pronounced Staten for telling. <coughs> or Staten Bible. State's Bible was the first translation of the Bible from the original Hebrew, Aramaic, 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 and Greek languages into Dutch. Really? Really? Well, I showed you other translations before that that also came from Aramaic, Greek, Hebrew. Yes, you have scriptures that were translated in Dutch before that, so that's a lie. Ordered by the government of the Protestant Dutch Republic. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Protestant Dutch Republic. And first published in 1637 at the Snoid of Dort in 1618 to 19. So the translation was done in 1618, 19, somewhere in there. Actually, it started with 1611, I think. Uh, but we're going to talk about those dates and what else happened to the Dutch Empire in some of those dates. Okay? It was, it was, but we, that might have to be another study. This one's getting long. It was therefore deemed necessary to have a new translation accurately based on the original tongues? I don't think so. The Snoid requested the States General of the Netherlands to commission it. I wonder who was controlling the States General of the Netherlands. Does anybody know? Anybody know what kind of religious beliefs they had? I do. Now, in 1626, the States General accepted the request from the Snoid. Seenod, uh, uh, Seenod. Uh, sorry about my Dutch pronunciation. Whatever word that is. And the translation started. It was completed in 1635 and authorized by the States General in 1637. From then until 1657, a half million copies were printed. It remained authoritative in Protestant churches well into the 20th century. Does it have a copyright? Can anyone tell me if this book has a copyright? I can't find it in there, but I'm told it has a copyright. I'd like some Dutch believers out there to help me out with this study, please. Now, innovative about this reformatory Bible translation was that it was translated directly from the most original sources available at the time. This is what they're saying. This is what they're saying. This is what, not, not what I'm saying. Just like Lucifer's translation, 1522 to 1534, and just like the King James Version, 1611, what a filthy lie. Well, some of the words are translated properly. Just like the King James. Like. But what did God say about Lucifer? We go back to Isaiah 14, 12, which I showed you is correct. It's Lucifer and all the old Dutch translations, except this wicked Staten Vertelic took it out. Doesn't want you to know the truth about that. What do you say in Isaiah 14, 14? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This is like. This is like the Most High. This one's in a lot rougher shape, but it's God's pure, perfect word. Why? Why is it? Because I read it. I read it and I study it. You study this book, there's nowhere in this book that says to study it. This book says study to show thyself approved. I'll be like the Most High. God's word is above all his name. Jesus put his word above all his name. This is more important than Jesus Christ according to Jesus Christ. And you're going to say, oh, you believe it's only in the English language, King James? And you, you uh, rebel against this book? Boy, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Okay, now we're going to talk about the translators. We're going to talk a little bit about the translators here. Okay. The translators. The translators and overseers, we're talking about the Staten for telling, appointed at the 13th session, the 26th of November, 1618. The translators were Johannes Borchmann, Calvinist. Very staunch Calvinist. We'll talk about Calvinism too. Wilhelm Bard Bordostas, he had a Calvinist ide ideolo ideology as well, for the Old Testament. They did the Old Testament, okay? Then we had Hermann Falkenlis and Petrus Cornelis for the New Testament and Apocrypha. 
Apocryphia. So the Apocryphia was done also in the in original book. I think it's taken out of this one. Now Herman Forcelius and Peter Cornelius. I'll, I'll write down those names at the bottom here so you can pronounce them properly in your own tongue. I don't speak Dutch. So they died mysteriously, I believe. We're going to have to check further into that. Why they died? What their belief was? Were they Calvinists as well? Or were they true Bible believers? We're going to check into that. But uh, when I get more, I wish I had somebody Dutch to help me out here. Before they could start on the translation, did you hear that? They died. They were appointed and they died mysteriously before they could start on the translation. I believe it's mysteriously. I'm 100% sure. I've seen some indications of that. I need someone Dutch to help me translate all these old Dutch documents I have. Before they could start on the translation. They died before they could start. Why do you think that would happen? They were replaced by two men. Guess which two men replaced them? Does anybody know? Have you studied the matter? You're saying, oh, this is okay. This is the Word of God in the Dutch. This is the best translation in Dutch. Have you even studied this matter? To show thyself approved? If you're a pastor, you better step down off that bench. Or off that pulpit or whatever you're sitting on. That chair. Because you're not blameless. Okay, uh, they were replaced before they could start the translation. Because they died mysteriously, I believe in mysteriously. And were therefore replaced by Festus Homius. He was a Dutch Calvinist theologian. And Antonius Wallenius. He was a Dutch Calvinist minister. So we had all Calvinists from start to finish working on this book, corrupting God's word. What does a Calvinist believe? You know, it certainly seems that the Staten Vertelling translation was a completely biased book towards ungodly Calvinist belief systems. In which case, there was little or no intent on the preservation of God's pure, perfect, preserved words. Like the King James, like the King, like the Most High, there is no intent on the preservation of God's pure, perfect words. So let's peek at what these men believe. We're going to look at what these men believed are. I'm going to insert a little video if there's time. I don't know how long this video has gone on. At this, that there are even zero point Calvinists. Why do I say that? Because there are Calvinists who don't believe in anything that Calvinism says, but because their favorite preacher is a Calvinist, they're a Calvinist. As we're of the reformed faith and they say with that strong voice we're reformed all of a sudden if you're not reformed you're in trouble so they're Calvinist even though they don't believe in anything that Calvinist said this is a video for those that are about to fall in it so you can come out my friend come out in the name of Jesus the slide that you're watching is Calvinism's basic view of salvation Calvinism is a very very dangerous doctrine if you picture for heaven you're picked for heaven if you picture for hell peace out homie you're going to hell that's not the gospel look at the people with the X they have hellfire below them they're destined to hell God picked them for hell think about this what happens if an unelect person dies in their infancy. In other words, what happens when an unelect baby dies? What happens? Tough question. Because we see in Deuteronomy 139 and we see in Isaiah 716 that God is God, God doesn't just judge babies for judging them. God allows them to grow up, have a knowledge between good and evil. But what happens when an unelect baby dies? Can such a thing happen? According to Calvinism, yes. If these men were truly champions of the faith, or men who hid something. What you're witnessing on the screen is the Reformation wall. Once again, it has William Farrell, who Keith Truth mentioned, John Calvin, Theodore Beza, and John Knox. Tons, tons! Of Calvinists write me and tell me, how dare you just say that we got this from John Calvin? Well, you call yourself a Calvinist. If you don't like John Calvin, pick another name. Well, you pick that name. So, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's talk about William Farrell. There was a situation that happened in Geneva. And this situation that happened in Geneva had to deal with a man called Michael Servetus. 
the man was still persecuted by John Calvin. And William Farrell knew about this. If he surveyed us comes to Geneva, I shall never let him go out alive if my authority has weight. Written by John Calvin. In August 20th, 1553. We have now new business in hand with Servetus. He intended perhaps passing through this city, for it is not yet known with what design he came. But after he had been recognized, I thought that he should be detained. I thought that he should be detained. The same man that seven years prior said that if he passed through Geneva, he would never let him out alive. Here's thinking, hey, I thought he should be detained. My friend Nicholas summoned him on a capital charge. So he even had his buddy summon him on a capital charge. I hope that the sentence of death will be at least passed upon him. Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful the unbel and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Uh, Calvinism is, um, uh, do I dare to say, I think, it's, um, it maligns God. The Bible says God is love. You say God loves everybody, but he doesn't want everybody to be saved. And uh, other than that, please, guys, you got to see what I got for you in part four. Stay tuned for part four. Thank you very much, and have a beautiful day. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, through his precious blood, bless you in all truth. Amen. them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.